This is what the Spirit of God said to me this morning. And you know, I don't have the education to think these things up. I want you to know that. I've got education in God. <laughs> That's the only way I'm, I'm educated. This is what he said. One of the most detrimental hindrances to being led by the Spirit of God. Now, this is one of the most detrimental hindrances to, be, to being led by the Spirit of God is the sight and sound phenomenon that much of the church world has embraced. One of the most detrimental hindrances to being led by the Spirit of God is the sight and sound phenomenon that much of the church world has embraced. This sight and sound phenomenon, this causes people to focus on the external instead of the internal. In other words, unknowingly, innocently, they concentrate on what man has made instead of what God has made. That moves people into the emotional realm instead of the spiritual realm. This is what the Holy Ghost said. They become dull and insensitive to the Spirit of God in their human spirit. Evil spirits capitalize on this to lead Christians away from God. Our focus needs to be on the Lord. And if you'll focus on the Lord more than you do the outward and the external, you'll focus on the Lord, what the Spirit of God is saying to you internally, He'll lead you and guide you into a place of victory and you will not be led astray. You will not. And the enemy will not take advantage of you. You will have total mastery over him. That's one thing to know. It's not the only thing, but one thing to know. If you want to master the devil, master evil, master anything out there, then first you master yourself. Where Jesus was totally submitted and committed to his Father. I only do what I see my Father do. I only say what I hear my Father say. The only way he could see his Father doing something if he was watching him. The only way he could hear his Father saying something if he was listening to him. Isn't that right? So when we focus on the external world too much, we miss what the Spirit of God is saying to us internally. And of course there's a balance to it. God understands that we live in a physical world and there's things that we have to do, you know, and the life that we have to live. You know, He understands that. But the problem arises when those things become more important than God. You know, things do have their place. There's an importance in different parts of life. God understands that. He's not against that. He's not against you having fun. He's not against you taking a break. He's not against any of that. And so can I balance that out with this? Don't set yourself or set goals for yourself that are unattainable. Because some people set goals when they hear messages like this, you know. Um, I'm going to do it. I'm going to lock myself in a room for six months. Listen, we're going to have to get a paddy wagon and come get you too. You know what I mean? And this is what I've discovered in my own personal walk. Because I do, uh, at times, I intensely seek God. You know what I mean? But that don't mean that I'm doing that same amount every day of my life. I'm always walking with God, you understand. But there are times that I set aside that belong to God. It's His time. And it's nobody else's time. It's not my time. It's not the family's time. It's not anybody else's time. It's the Lord's time. And whatever you want, that's what I'm here for. Jesus said to Brother Hagin, September the 2nd, 1950. You, most of you will be familiar with this. If not, you can read it yourself in the book, I Believe in Visions, chapter 2, called Come Up Hither. Now when you go to read that chapter, he talks about the United States of America and things that the Lord has showed him about judgment coming and things like that. But it's in, in Come Up Hither, chapter 2, in the book, I Believe in Visions. And if you don't happen to have it in your library, you can get it right online. You discover you probably get it on Kindle or uh, whatever. Some of them book readers or books or whatever. What them things are. You know. 
But this is what Jesus said to Dan Hagen. <clears throat> in September 2nd, 1950, he was caught up to heaven and he said this to him. And he talked about in the last days there would be signs and wonders and miracles and the outpouring of his spirit that would far surpass what had happened in the book of Acts. But then he went on to say, and this is what I want to get to because we're talking about how to keep ourselves so that evil, seducing spirits and things do not influence us and take us away or get us into error or anything like that. Jesus said, many of my own people will not accept the moving of my spirit and will turn back. It will not be ready to meet me at my coming. He said, many of my own people. So he's not talking about the world. He's not talking about the lost. He's not talking about the unsaved. He's talking about the saved. He said, many of my own people. This is a direct quote. I didn't add or take away anything. Many of my own people will not accept the moving of my spirit and will turn back and will not be ready to meet me at my coming. He said, Jesus went on to say, many will be deceived by false prophets. You remember what we've been talking about? Many, he said, many, not just a few. He said, many will be deceived by false prophets and miracles of satanic origin. Say, so can Satan work miracles? Yes. Why does he work miracles? To deceive. That was just like when Moses and Aaron went down and threw down his staff. Aaron threw down the staff and it became a snake. The devil worshippers done the same thing. They matched a miracle for miracle to a point. Then they went and told Pharaoh, because they couldn't match him, this is the mighty power of God, you better leave these folks alone. Of course, he didn't listen. But said, many will be deceived by false prophets and miracles of satanic origin. But remember, we're talking about how not to be deceived. This is what he says. This is the key. This is what Jesus said. But follow, he said, to Dad Hagen, which applies to us, but follow the Word of God, the Spirit of God, and me, and you will not be deceived. What do you do? You follow the Word of God, number one. Number two, the Spirit of God inside of you. And number three, me, the Lord, and what He says to you. And you will not be deceived. He said, I am gathering my own together and am preparing them for the time is short. So we see we've got concrete Evidence straight from the lips of Jesus how that we do not, will not be deceived. We're going to follow the Word of God, the Spirit of God, and the Lord Jesus. And He said, you will not, will not means you will not be deceived. So all the fear and concern about being deceived is gone in Jesus' name. We're not concerned about it because I'm going to walk in line with the Word of God. And so what are you going to walk in? I'm going to walk in the light that I know. And that's all you're required to do. God will take care of the rest of it. Whatever level you're on, walk on that level. God will protect you. He'll watch over you. You don't have to know everything. You don't have to know every formula and every thee and thou and thus and what for. But you, what you know, just walk in it. 